Um, we put a video out um, how how to come to Christ, how to give your life to Christ. And in that video, and I'll link it up here in the description here so you can click on that and see it if you haven't. But in that video, we talk about what it means to give your life to Christ and how you do that. And basically, it's through a simple prayer and believing in Jesus Christ that you can give your life to Christ. And then, you know, from that point, you can move on into um, being a child of God. But for some people, you might be asking, well, what does that mean? What happens? after I give my life to Christ. And so that's what I want to talk about today is now that you've given your life to Christ, you may be saying, what's next? And so we're going to talk about that just a little bit, because I think that that might be some of the things that people do is that they may give their life to Christ, but then they're stuck wondering, well, what's next? Uh, okay. I said the prayer and, and I said, and confess my sins to God. And I asked him to forgive me for those sins. But now what do I do? And so I want to give you four things that you should do and start working on now, because after you've given your life to Christ, please understand that life doesn't stop just because you've given your life to Jesus Christ. But now you have to prepare yourself to begin to move into this new amazing journey that you have, something that God has blessed you with. The first thing I would tell you to do is to simply connect to a local church. Once you give your life to Christ, you've got to connect to a local church. If you think about it, when we were living in sin and when we when we were doing the things that were contrary to God, we did things that um, were contrary to God with groups of people. For example, you know, you may used to hang in the clubs or you may used to uh, hang around with people and just drink or smoke cigarettes or whatever it is that you did. But you hung with a community of people doing the things that you all agreed on and that you all love to do together. Well, when you give your life to Christ, you've got to do the same thing. You have to connect to people who are like minded, who are like you, who are going in the same direction that you're going in or who are progressing or have progressed further than you so that you can have someone to lean on. Listen, we all need community. We all need people to love us and to care for us and for for us to have people that we can love and care for. So community is a very big thing for you, regardless of what you're doing, but especially when you come to Christ. Now you need to begin to change some of the relationships that are not good for you. You need to get rid of people or not. I want to say, let me let me correct that, not say get rid of, but you can't hang with them the way that you used to. You still must love them and care for them, but you're changing. At this point, when you've given your life to Christ, God is going to begin to clean you and change you and make you into a new person. You become a new creature. And so you need to hang with some of the people that are in that same pool. That's where the local church comes in. And you have to find a church that that's teaching the word of God, that's teaching from the Bible, that's not not sugarcoating the word and what i mean by that is is that they're not taking tidbits and bits and pieces and applying it to what they want to say but they're genuinely taking the word for what it is word for word and ministering to you so that you can grow so number one is you have to connect to a local church the second thing i would say that you need to do is that you need to get a bible now when we talk about the bible many people are intimidated by the bible because to, to many people it's just a big book that has a lot of words and some people think that it's poetry and some people think that it's just a bunch of stories but the bible when you come to christ is your life cycle it is your life source it is it is your road map to this life this new life that you have and so we have to have a bible and the thing about the bible is once we understand which Bible we need to get that fits us and that works for us, the better off we're going to be. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so there are many translations. There are many types of Bibles. Uh, you have the traditional King James Version, which I love, and it's very poetic and it has a certain tone to it. And but it sometimes can be very difficult to understand. And I don't sign off on every Bible translation because there are some translations that kind of skew or leave out things that should not be left out of the Word of God. The Word of God as it is, as it was written uh, and inspired by God to men, the 66 books of the Bible are what we need to have. And so when we start pulling stuff from the Bible, 
we're doing what we should not be doing with the word of God. And so I do keep the King James Version very handy because it is the original manuscript that I love to read from. Um, but then there are other translations that are more modern day clear tone and the Bible comes in, in translate different translations, but some of the Bible translations are word for word, which are great to have. And they're going to translate based on the original Greek and Hebrew uh, terminologies and phrases. And then there's also thought for thought and some of those thought for thoughts and some of the translated words of word for words are not necessarily accurate in that they remove things that should not be removed or they add too much to the tone and the original message. And so another version that I like to use is the New King James Version. It is uh, still pretty much poetic in sound, but it takes away some of the thus, thous, and the these that might be confusing for you and gives it a little bit more cleaner tone. Uh, I am really loving the NA NASB, the New American Translation version right now. That version is um, is really clear, really modern day. The ESV, which is the English standard version, is also very great. Um, so I would encourage you to, number one, look at Bibles uh, and their translation. And you can easily go to Bible.com online and play with the translations and read certain scripture texts to see what it sounds like in different variations of translations to pick out something that speaks to you. Um, and so make sure that you get a Bible. You have to have a Bible because that is your roadmap to life. It is your roadmap to this Christian walk that you're in. Um, one translation that I do kind of stay away from is NLT, New Living Translation, because it is one of those that I've noticed that removes text. It's very clear and easily understood. I just don't like that it takes some scripture references out, but we need to have the word as the word is. And so just make sure you get a Bible. So number one, you must connect to the local church. Number Number two, you need to get a Bible. Number three, when you come to Christ, because you're so new to this and you're trying to figure out this new life that you've been given, um, you have to feed the hunger. Number three, feed the hunger. You're going to have a lot of passion, a lot of desire to grow and learn. And I think in doing number one and two, that's really going to help you a lot that you collect to a local, uh, connect to a local church and that you get a Bible. But as you're in the local church, make connection with people that can help you grow. People that will be mentors and coaches for you to help you understand God's word, to help you learn what you're reading and to clear up questions that you don't understand. That's going to help you feed the hunger because there's going to be a desire there to grow and learn about this new life that you've been given. And oh, what a great life it is to know that um, God has died, sent his son Jesus Christ to die for you and that he's given his life that you might have life. And now what do I do with that? The fact that I'm saved and I'm a part of the, the, the family of God and that if I were to die today because I've given my life to Christ, that I can make it into heaven now. <clears throat> That's amazing. And so you're going to have a great hunger to learn more about that. You connect into the local church and making connections with community groups and with leaders in the church and people that are, are helping you to grow, connect with them, learn from them. That's going to help feed the hunger. Number two, uh, which was, was to, to get a Bible. As you read the word, the word of God is life. It comes alive as you read it it begins to open up your understanding and give you clarity on things that you may not even ever may not have ever thought about, but it's going to give you some revelation about yourself and not just about the men and the women are there in the Bible, but it's going to give you revelation about yourself. And so there's a hunger that's going to grow from that. So I encourage you that even if you don't understand something you're reading in the Bible, that you don't stop, don't stop reading it, keep reading it. And, and then learn the resources that are available to help you understand the word of God better. So number three is certainly feed the hunger. The fourth and final thing that I would give you for right now, since you're new to Christ and that you're coming in and trying to figure out what to do next is simply talk to God. When I say talk to God it's prayer, praying, learn to pray as we pray and speak to God. Uh, we, we begin to build a relationship. Our relationship that we have, whether it be with a husband or wife, our spouses, our children, our parents, our friends, our family, our co-workers, whatever it is, it is based upon communication. When we talk to each other, we learn each other, we grow from each other, we grow with each other, and it's all based on communication. Well, the more you talk to God through prayer, the more you can begin to hear him and understand what he's saying. That coupled with you reading the word of God will open up the doors for God to begin to speak to you in your heart. You take this on and you begin to grow and develop your relationship. And so I encourage you to talk to God. Don't be afraid to pray. 
Don't worry about how it sounds because you're new to it. But the thing that you have to do is do it. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you're talking. And if you don't understand how to do that, there are going to be some critical scriptures that you can learn that will help you understand the format of how God, uh, how Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. But in the essence, in the purest form, and for this particular video, to help you, just talk to God. Just like I'm talking to you right now, speak to him. God, I, I'm in a great phase in my life, and I'm grateful for all that you're doing in my life. And I just, I just want you to know that I'm appreciative, and I thank you for saving me and giving me this new life. And God, I surrender myself to you. What do you want from me? How can I be of service to you? What is it that you desire for me to do? That's simply talking to God. And God will respond to you the more you do to that, the more you grow in him, the more you connect to your local church, the more you read your Bible, the more you keep your hunger and passion for him, and the more you talk to God, he's going to reveal himself to you and you're going to find yourself growing in ways that you could have never imagined. I want you to know that I'm praying for you and I'm super excited for this new journey that you're on. It is the best decision you can make in this life because after we're done with this life, after God brings us home, we're going to a new place, a home and a house that's not made by man's hands, where there is no corruption in it. There's no destruction of it because it's made by our Lord and Savior, our God, Jesus Christ. And so I want to encourage you, bless you, and we look forward to hearing what God is doing in your life.